Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time and today we're at one of the best fossil localities in all of Texas. A place known as Whiskey Bridge along the Brazos River about an hour and a half north of Houston, Texas. About 35 to 40 million years ago, the ocean came this far north and deposited a whole bunch of sea life up here. And we're going to hopefully see things like gastropod shells and bivalve shells and some corals. And maybe if we're really lucky, maybe in a shark's tooth. One of the rarest things to find here. There are over 250 different types of specimens that have been found at this location already. So with that being said, let's go check out the Whiskey Bridge fossil locality. So I'm along the Brazos River, which separates actually Brazos County from Burleson County. And this bridge above me is known as Whiskey Bridge because in Brazos County, they were allowed to have some types of alcohol, but they weren't allowed to have liquor. So people would drive across this bridge and come across this bridge or these bridges here to go get their liquor over in Burleson County. So that's where this name of Whiskey Bridge comes from, a little bit of interesting history in this region. Why we're here is to take a look at all the fossils that are here, being that this is described as the best fossil locality in all of Texas by a number of people. So right away, I walk down the bank behind me. Almost immediately, I can turn around and see fossils everywhere. Here is a nice coquina. You can see all the fossil shells in here. It's a fossil hash, and this is actually in side of a limestone, so we're not going to be able to get the fossils out of this. Where we're going to be looking for the fossils is along these muddy banks here. So here at Whiskey Bridge along the Brazos River, we can actually start talking about and looking at the stratigraphy that's here. And the stratigraphy is really made up of one what we call a member that's part of a formation that then is part of a group so much like biology thinks of taxa uh, thinking about uh, the families and species and genus in geology we do something similar with stratigraphy where we start thinking about the group so we're in what's known as the Claiborne group here which is Eocene in age roughly around 40 million years old and within that we're in what's known as the Crockett Formation and with within the Crockett Formation we're sitting here in the Stone City member of the Crockett Formation. Now within that Stone City member there's actually what are known as beds. So we can actually see Mosley bed or the Mosley bed excuse me and then we have other beds in here. We have the Silty Muddy bed. We have one they call the MGB or the main Glauconite bed which so we're within what's known as the Crockett Formation, the Stone City member. We're going to pay attention to this mostly bed and we're going to take a look at that. This is a limestone bed, which is basically a coquina here. It's full of shells and we're not going to be able to get fossils out of that, but we can definitely take a look at it. And it's a good marker bed to tell us when we're on the top of the Stone City member. With that being said, let's go take a look at some of this Mosley limestone. And then we'll go from there and take a look for the MGB so we can start looking for some fossils. See, there's these resistive units compared to what we see along the banks here where you can see there's these slope formers along the Brazos River here. However, there are these resistive units and these are the Mosley limestones and you'll see they're chock full of all kinds of shells, all kinds of old marine life in this limestone. Now these are going to be very difficult to get nice samples out of because they have been solidified by calcite. So this is a limestone. I'm heading over to some of the mudstones that I can see over here or shells. As I'm walking, one thing I want to point out is the green shell behind me. So this is that MGB or the main glauconite bed and you can see the greenish color with it. And so this is a bed they can use as a marker as we look down along the cliff face here to get an idea of where we're at. So here's the glauconite bed. If we look up to the base of the slope up there, we're back in that Mosley limestone. So we can start looking at the stratigraphy here. One thing to recognize about the stratigraphy is just like if you were making a cake, the bottom layer has to come before the layer on top of it. It seems like common sense, but it's something to keep in mind is that we understand that this is an older bed than the stuff on top of it than the stuff on top of it. So in stratigraphy, the rocks young upwards. This stuff is so fossiliferous that they've said they found 250 different species of marine organisms in this outcrop. That is 
mind-boggling to think about how much life was living in this area of the ocean at that time and here's I have no idea what that is that's pretty interesting so within about two minutes I've already found three pretty cool looking shells I walked a ways maybe a couple hundred meters a couple hundred yards down and I'll show you what I found but before I show you that I wanted to show you something else here and that is there are still gastropods that live here however these are not necessarily fossil gastropods these are more modern day gastropods that live along the river so be aware that there are modern gastropod shells as well okay so now I've been at it for a little while longer and you'll see there's quite a bit of biodiversity I've picked up in different types of shells um, all pretty small you can see the size of my finger here but a lot of actually gastropods and some really neat ones that I found here and if I look inside the bed that's known as the MGB or the glauconite bed you'll see there's all kinds of pieces of shells in here and you really have to dig through and look and try to find some of the best specimens in here I am so excited I finally found a piece of horn coral or solitary coral but what's interesting there's a little gastropod on the bottom of it and a root grew through it <laughs> how unusual is that but I finally found a piece of coral a little piece of horn coral here I'm so excited so right up here is some beautiful horn coral and unfortunately I can't quite reach it that's one thing to be aware of here is that you know these are some some pretty steep slopes so be careful here and sometimes you're going to see something and you just can't reach it which is such a bummer those hor horn corals are just out of my reach so but I'm not going to try to get those I already got some nice horn corals the horn corals are coming out of this section through here so if I pan to the left you'll see I'm standing in the glauconite bed here side and it's the section just above it where I'm finding the corals I found some I think bryzoans in there as well um, so that seems to be a good layer for finding those kinds of things down below here in the glauconitic bed a lot of gastropods and some other types of uh, maybe bivalves um, shells in here as well uh, as you get lower actually I couldn't find as many shells down in these lower sections but I did find some really nice burrows so fossil burrows from the lobsters or or maybe shrimp I'm not exactly sure what's making them I'll have to look mention where the burrows that were here or the trace fossils from where some kind of sea creatures would have uh, made their home in the muds and then those were later replaced by minerals and you end up being able to see their old tunnel system so this is an old burrow it's been squished as well so that's why it's a little more oblong you can imagine it's probably more cylindrical or rounded when it was originally deposited before the rocks and the compaction took place but we can see where creatures were burrowing through a number of these units and so I picked up some of these because these are actually some of the favorite fossils I found because it really records the life of a creature not just the body fossils but actually recording doing something and I think that's so fascinating to think about so I collected these three to take home uh, so I think those are pretty neat fossils to keep as I was starting to leave as is always the case I ran into somebody and they said you should really look on the other side on the south side of the bridge for fossils the, the shell sizes are larger and there's a little bit more biodiversity and I'll tell you what I've been over here literally for five minutes and let me show you what I found so if you come down here come towards the south side and look what I found in just a couple minutes there's that one there's that one beautiful shells I've got another gastropod here the biodiversity seems to be much healthier and look at this conical shell and the little tip on it spending about 15 more minutes over on this section on the south side of the river you'll see some of the great fossils I found look at this conical feature or this conical one look at this palesipod or oyster shell um, some beautiful bivalves um, some spectacular ornate some more conical ones uh, so definitely decide to come visit more conical ones look at this really pretty one and it's ornate design on its shell gorgeous couple more pointers if you're coming here to do fossil collecting one is you will get dirty it is muddy here you will want good shoes you are going to get dirty Two, have a pair of tweezers to help grab some of the fossils would be really good and be very careful when you're trying to remove layers to look for the fossils uh, the other thing is 
watch out for poison ivy. I did see some here and I didn't have my camera out at the time so I was trying to avoid it, but there is poison ivy here. So make sure you keep your eyes open for that. Thank you all for joining me today to check out the Whiskey Bridge fossil locality known as the best fossil location within all of Texas for collecting. So as a recap, we're within what's known as the Claiborne Group and the Crockett Formation in the Stone City member. So within that member, we're within an ancient seaway that was here about 35 to 40 million years ago during what was known as the Eocene time. And with that, we we're able to find a lot of seashells and a lot of sea life here, including some trace fossils or ichno fossils, which I was very excited to see. So with that being said, thank you all for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave a, leave a comment below if you've been to this site, if you have some suggestions. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. Keep up on all my videos on geology and history within Texas and beyond. Thank you very much all for joining with me again. I enjoyed having you out here with me. It was a fun adventure. I learned a lot. I hope you did as well. Take care.